Well, here I am. Good morning. It's Saturday morning, full of technical problems, and I don't understand why. Everything worked great last week. Morton, chum. Hey, Phil. So, um, I was going to start this morning with some unboxings. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of cool stuff lined up from today for today. Um, the main feature later on this afternoon is going to be the Uncle Don Don Cutoff Shorts Countdown. And uh, we're going to be paying a tribute to my Uncle Don who passed away this week. Uh, I'm going to have a, uh, my mom co-hosting that portion of the show. So look for that this afternoon. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for now, though, for the morning, I wanted to do uh, some unboxings. I'll show you some of the cool gadgets that I, uh, I got off Amazon this week. Um, this is a little neat little tripod for my phone for when I'm live streaming because you have to have it vertical right and I have to have I have to have be able to access my charging port so I can't just uh, prop my phone up on something or the charging port won't uh, you know won't sit flush um, so yeah I got this thing and it's one of these flexi flexi leggy things um, so I'll probably be using this today if I can uh, share the screen with somebody else I will be using this device I'm worried about it being a little side heavy on the uh, you know on the side of the phone I was having some issues with that when I was trying it out but should be okay apparently I got four people watching but I can't see that on my laptop I can only see that on my cell phone weird all right so uh, I bought that Oh, and this thing also came with a little Bluetooth um, controller so that I can um, I can actually set up the camera and uh, trigger the camera remotely with this little Bluetooth thing. So I'm going to try that out uh, maybe this weekend. I'm going to make some... Uh, some uh, Uncle Meat's going to fucking hate this, but I'm going to make some little Star Wars vignettes. I'm going to try to animate them. Set up the camera and uh, just let the figure... You know, just animate the figure. And I can trigger the camera with the Bluetooth. So that's gadget number one. Because I have uh, so much shit now to plug into my computer, I decided to buy a USB hub. I haven't even opened this yet, but this one has um, three ports on it. So maybe in the future, this is what I will be plugging all my live streaming shit into. Aquila is the brand. Aquila, Aquila, Aquila. I don't know. Anyway, who cares? It was cheap, and it'll probably work fine. And I also got some of these uh, USB extension cords. Is what these are. USB extension cords because the cord on my camera is really, really uh, uh, short. And these will these will come in handy, I am sure. Look at that. Look at those heavy duty. USB extension cords. Exciting, yes. So exciting. Let's see. We think we have another. We have another comment. I've got some comments. Jeff Stephen likes my post. Oh, that was the well, aborted watch party. Okay. Jeff Stephen likes my video. That's the video I'm watching right now. Hello, Jeff Stephen. Um, again, I can't see who's watching. I can't see how many people are watching, unless I go to my cell phone and then I can kind of see. It says five people are watching right now. That's awesome. All right, well, let's go get those boxes that I'm going to unbox. Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! Seven people watching. That's not bad for this early in the morning. Um, we'll save Amazon for last because you guys want to see what's in here. Probably shouldn't have shown my address. Ah, fucking stupid. Okay. <laughs> when I put this on YouTube, I'll edit that out. This is my latest CD order from Encore Records, and I don't precisely remember what I ordered. Oh, hello, John T. Snow. And Jeff Steven says... I do like this post. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is my latest order from Encore Records, which I placed, uh, I don't know, a week and a half ago, and I can't remember exactly what I ordered. I kind of like to um, 
I like to place an order for some new music and then just kind of forget about it while I wait for it to arrive, and that way there's still some element of surprise when it arrives. Uh, for Encore Records, I've been ordering uh, four CDs every uh, couple of weeks. So uh, this is now up to 16 CDs. And um, let's see what's inside. I try to order albums I've never heard before. Is That's one of the things that I am trying to do right now, is ordering albums I've never heard before. Uh, let's see, we got some more comments here. Would now be a good time to give me a shout? Actually, why not? Yeah, let me go get my phone. Now is a good time. We can pause this unboxing because I had something else planned for today and uh, time is uh, the key here. We're going to do a live interview. A live interview, isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Um, so I will uh, just wait for this phone to ring. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for this phone to ring. Waiting for this phone to ring. Waiting for this phone to ring. Waiting for this phone to ring. We got five people watching. Five people watching. Waiting for this phone to ring. Waiting for this phone to ring. Waiting for this phone to ring. We're doing live interview Saturdays. Oh! -ho! Hello! You have reached the LeBrain live stream! Oh, shoot. This isn't. Volume up. Okay! Hello! You have reached the LeBrain live stream! I don't think this is working. Hello. Oh, there we go. We have a voice. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You on, uh, you on screen. I, I must be delayed. Yes. It's, uh, it's, like, it's not quite coordinated, far, but, that's far, but I, I am now uh, at least on audio with the LeBrain live stream. You will have to ignore your your uh, your video for this uh, for this call, unfortunately. Uh, no, the, I couldn't find the icon that said like uh, go on video. So. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm on my laptop right now, so that I don't think that would work. But no. let me uh, let me just introduce. We have the one and the only Jeff Steven on the line. We're going to do an interview this morning because uh, he's been doing something really cool, and he's actually I'm actually I'm actually late to the party here. He's already gotten some radio attention. Um, but you and your family, your whole family, have been making daily videos to support the frontline healthcare workers. Yes, this is true. So the um the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario sent out a call, I think it was during the, the March break for, for schools, and they said, uh, at 7.30, go out and cheer for healthcare workers, bang pots and pans, yeah. noise to let the workers know you support them, and it just turned into a, a nightly tradition for us, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. I mean, uh, people on Facebook love it. Um, I am curious how many of these you guys have done since then have you done one every single day or do you take weekends off no it's been uh, it's been every day we figured if the if the healthcare workers are going every day we can yell with our kids for 10 seconds a night uh the cheering for them uh, and it's so yeah just uh, every night uh we we go out there we do the cheer and then uh yeah post it it's been fun uh reconnecting with people as well and hearing stories of like our friends who are in the healthcare industry are sharing it with their friends. Oh, awesome. Chance. So it's been a nice, uh, yeah, just a, a nice uh, daily routine now. <laughs> are your neighbors at the point now where they're waiting for you guys to come out and make the latest video? They, uh, I think, I think they know what's coming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, but it's been, it's been, uh, it's been great. And, uh, and also just on a personal, just fun reconnecting with people that I might not have talked to in a few years. And then, they're saying, oh yeah, they, they've enjoyed it, and uh, it's just become a part of their day too, which is which is pretty neat. So I've noticed that you um, you have chosen to, instead of doing the quarantine haircut, you've chosen to do the quarantine baseball hat. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> so, uh, two questions. Uh, how many baseball hats do you own, and uh, is there going to come a point where the baseball hat will no longer be sufficient? Good, yeah, the, uh, the wings are starting to fly out from underneath it uh, pretty... Uh, 
going nicely now, I guess you could say. The uh, the, the big one is I've got my uh, Pittsburgh Penguins hat, and so that's uh, a staple of the videos too as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, but um, the I guess, yeah, the, the, it is getting to the point where the hat just may not be hiding much anymore. It's, it's just uh, it's flowing out nicely. The uh, I thought of uh, Jen the other day, though, because one of the cheers I think I'd like to bring in is, do you remember the... Uh, the VHS, the passion returns about the Toronto Maple Leafs 92-93 season. Oh, I'm sure she has that VHS. Yeah, so they, there was a cheer in it where it went like, Leafs are the best, better than all the rest. I think we'll eventually, it's a bit of an obscure reference, but eventually do it for the healthcare workers are the best, better than all the rest. <laughs> that also sounds uh, like a familiar old Tina Turner song, Simply the Best, yeah, better than all the rest. Classic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, me personally, I, I think my favorite so far has been the uh, your Dot Matrix printer video. I really loved that one. That one was just awesome. <laughs> well, it's one of, it was one of those uh, right place, right time. Just someone was getting rid of this box of Dot, dot Matrix printer. And I don't know why anyone ever would ever want to get rid of that. But we quickly scooped it up. And, um, and it was full credit to Wendy for the idea to, to add the sound effect of yes. the, the paper processing. and. It's, uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a fun, uh, fun version there. Well, um, thank you so much for calling this morning. Um, do you want to take a second just to plug your website? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it's neat. I've, uh, met, uh, you and all these great, uh, folks through the, uh, the blogging community through, uh, 1001 albums in 10 years dot wordpress dot com. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for doing this, uh, for the healthcare workers. Like you said, they're going to work every day. So let's not forget that um, we are we are in uh, strange times these days, and those healthcare workers have been just keeping on, keeping on. And uh, thank you for doing what you're doing because every little bit helps. Oh, it's the least we can do, Mike. And thanks for hosting that live stream too. It's a great way to bring people together. Right on. Take care. You have a wonderful weekend, and I hope that you can catch some of it as we go. Sounds good. Enjoy the weekend. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Well, that was awesome. Jeff Steven, 1001 Albums in 10 Years. Ah, he's been doing such a great job uh, with his videos for the healthcare workers. So, so creative. Those guys are so creative. I'm so excited. I can, oh my God. Okay. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. It's still, uh, it's still early morning. John T. Snow, cheers to Jeff and his family and the healthcare workers. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for doing that, Jeff. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so it looks like in this order, I went with basically two bands and, uh, no surprise here. I have been, uh, getting into the cars big time in the year 2020. Um, rest in peace, Rick Ocasek, rest in peace, Benjamin Orr, um, Heartbeat City. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a landmark classic. This is the Mutt Lang produced album, expanded edition featuring the bonus tracks, Hello Again Remix, Drive Demo, Ooh. One More Time, early version of Why Can't I Have You, Baby I Refuse, early version of I Refuse, Jackie, early version of Heartbeat City, Breakaway, B-Side, and Tonight She Comes, from Greatest Hits. I cannot wait. Can you, I mean, here I am, it's the year 2020, and I am hearing these albums for the first time. That's, that's, I love, one thing I love about being a music fan is you can be 47 years old and hear an album like this for the first time because there's so much music out there. There's so much available and, you know, there's bands I haven't even scratched the surface of and I'm I, here I am scratching the surface. I'm getting into these, these Cars albums and I'm loving them. I'm loving them. Let's see how many people are watching. Four. Okay. Um, the other album, Shake It Up by the Shake It Up by Z Cars. Uh, bonus tracks on this one are an early version of Since You're Gone, Shake It Up Demo, I'm Not the One Remix, Cruiser, early version, Take It on the Run, early version of A Dream Away, Coming Coming Up You Again, 1981 version of Coming Up You. Little Black Egg and Midnight Dancer. Uh, I believe Little Black Egg was a um, was previously released. It's an Iggy Pop cover. It was previously released on the uh, Just What I Needed anthology. And Midnight Dancer says it's 
previously unreleased completely. So this album was produced by Roy Thomas Baker. Came out in... Um, meh, meh, I'm not sure. Okay, so I got some cars. But I got some sticks. Sort of. I got some stick solo albums. Tommy Shaw's Ambition. Um, I think this was the only one I, miss I was missing till now. Um, last year I got... Um, yeah, I can't remember the names of the albums. The one with Girls with Guns. and It was that two-pack. It was a two-pack of Tommy Shaw albums, and this was basically the only one that wasn't in there. And I also got his uh, live acoustic with the uh, the children's choir thing. Yeah, I like Tommy Shaw, you know? His solo albums have been decent. This one is from uh, 1987, so I don't think it made much impact at all. There was one song on here that was on his acoustic live album. It might have been, I think it was Love You Too Much. And I got Dennis DeYoung's new album, which I've heard is just woo amazing. I'm so glad to get Dennis DeYoung's 26 East, Volume 1. What's that about? Oh, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. I guess uh, kind of the crappy thing is I'm going to be sitting here live streaming and I won't be um, spending my time listening to uh, to these albums as much. But uh, that's what I got from Encore Records. Four new albums that I've never heard before. And um, this time, when I place my next Encore order, I am going to buy, um, assuming they have it available, the new Def Leppard live set. That looks amazing. Oh, we only have three people watching. Well, that's okay. We're getting close to the uh, close to the end of the unboxing. We have this Amazon Prime box, and I hope it's my full order. That's what I'm hoping. I know what's in here if it's my full order. I asked for everything to be shipped in one one container, but Amazon don't listen to that. All that tech stuff that I was showing you earlier, I asked for that to be shipped all in one container too, and it didn't. It all shipped separately. Ah. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> this is bizarre. I don't know why they package. This one's double packaged. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Don't want to destroy the contents when I rip this sucker open. John T. Snow is reviewing it as we speak. I'm assuming he's talking about the new Dennis D. Young. That's awesome, John! That is awesome. You'll probably have it reviewed before I have it listened to. That's wicked. Alright. Bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Too much packaging. And I'm probably going to end up wrecking this fucking thing. Just by doing all this. They put one loose in the box. And then one they package up to fucking high heaven. This is annoying. Oh no, the leopard. He's reviewing the leopard. Holy crap, that's a big one. But I suppose if you are, are going to review a, uh, a I guess, a, is it a double? Is it a double live or is it a quadruple live? Can you let me know? Um, I guess if you're going to review a set that's that large and that um, uh, kind of a, it's a big deal release this year, you know? If you're reviewing something like that, it's good to be doing it on a Saturday where you have the luxury of time. Because you want to be thorough. This is so fucking annoying. This is the most annoying unboxing ever. I am bending the, the fucking card. Jesus Christ. This is so stupid. Tape, bubble wrap. And there's another layer of bubble wrap under here that I have to get through. So annoying. I'm totally bending this. Trying to get this off. Four CDs and two Blu-rays. So essentially a quadruple live. Um, I don't know how much time it would take you to consume four CDs and two Blu-rays. But I assume, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, that meals aside, this is going to be the majority of your day. <laughs> okay. So there's this new action figure line that I've kind of wanted to dip my toes into. It's called Reaction by Super 7. I believe, yeah, Super 7. 
Um, and these ones are licensed by Hasbro. Optimus Prime and Megatron. They're done in the old Star Wars figure. Five points of articulation style. Um, everybody comes with a weapon. But the cool thing about reaction figures is it's not just Transformers. It's Predator. It's Terminator 2. It's Star Trek. It's everything. There's, there's a Papa Emeritus from Ghost. They're Misfits figures. Yes, it will be, says John. Well, good on you, man. You are... <coughs> I hope my voice lasts the whole day. You are doing your rock and roll duty, John. You are uh, servicing the public. Before they spend their hard-earned money, they can go to Too Loud, Too Old Music with a fantastic new spiffy logo, and they can read the Def Leppard review. Um, I'm probably going to end up opening these figures. As nice as the cards are, I, I, I like them. I, I want to handle them. I want to. I want to fiddle around with them and play with them. Um, and the neat thing about all of these different figures from all these different they live is another line that's in the reaction thing. You can you can have them all play together. You can have Predator meets Optimus Prime, and why not? Uh, another thing I like about these figures is that they are uh, reminiscent of the Generation One Transformers Action Masters which were non-transforming Transformers. It was the very tail end of the toy line. They were out of ideas, and the best thing they could come up with was non-transforming Transformers. Um, but there was a certain appeal to that, in that they're more cartoon accurate, and uh, you can have them interact with your G.I. Joes. They can all ride in the same vehicles. So I might just open these. I mean, they're not worth a million dollars. And the other thing in this box is I decided uh, to add this to my collection. Never read it. This is, excuse me, the original reprint of the original Marvel Comics Infinity Saga. Never read it. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I love Marvel Comics reprints. Three people watching. That's okay. I love Marvel Comics reprints. Um... As much as I love original comic books as well, I can handle this. I can be rough with it. I can p throw it in my knapsack and bring it to the cottage with me. Oh, God, this is gorgeous. Look at that. This is stunning. There's Cyclops versus Thanos. I know how that one ended. Yeah, a lot of people die in this. The comic, says Frank Toms. Yes, um, nice, you'll enjoy it. So this means, for, I'm assuming, Frank, that this means you've you've read this. Um, man, yeah, I am going to enjoy this. I am going to enjoy this. When I'm going to enjoy it, I don't know. Because I am planning on doing the live stream today. Uh, on and off all day. Um... I uh, have just uh, had a wonderful morning here doing this unboxing and talking to Jeff Steven. Uh, that was our first time speaking uh, voice to voice, and I hope you enjoyed that interview. He's doing a fantastic job. And thumbs up to Jeff Steven, and thank you to the healthcare workers every day. My God, I can't believe we are uh, so many weeks and months into this pandemic. Frank Toms, I have a copy on the shelf. I actually own a lot of comics. That does not surprise me, Frank. Um, I, I think that we uh, we will have a lot to talk about this summer when eventually we have a sausage fest, whether it's uh, August or September. It'll happen, I'm sure. But uh, I really uh, I miss my friends, man. Um, you know, I, I'm sure by now I would have had several hangouts with Max the Axe several hangouts with Uncle Meat, but um, here we are, X amount of weeks and months into this pandemic, I'm still live streaming, I've lost track of how many live streams I've done now, I've upped my uh, live streaming game by getting this new camera and uh, using the old Bluetooth, uh, sorry, Blue Snowball for uh, for my audio, yeah, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun doing this, and um, it, it's kind of funny because if you are out there on the streets, it seems like it seems like social distancing is kind of over. 
I, I took an hour-long drive on Thursday night, and I didn't see any social distancing at all. In fact, all that driving around, I don't even think I saw one mask. And, um, you know, large groups of people sitting in lawn chairs in a Tim Hortons parking lot. I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I want this to be over. I want to see my friends. I want to hug my grandma. But it just seems like people are forgetting about it now. And I don't know if we should be forgetting about it this soon. We really haven't received any... Uh, any directive saying, hey, it's okay to have a Tim Hortons parking lot party. Don't you remember, it wasn't that long ago where two cars were given a ticket just for socializing a Tim Hortons parking lot car to car. That wasn't that long ago. So I don't know what to think about all this. It seems people are really letting go their, uh, their concerns. And that makes me concerned. I just want this to be over as quickly as possible but not prematurely I want to go to the cottage and spend some time with my family I want to go to sausage fest and spend some time with my friends that is not going to happen if we are lax anyway enough preaching that's not what we're here for we are here for the live streaming fun uh, same here says Frank People have become complacent. I think it's the summer type weather. Yeah, it is the summer type weather, and of course the um, the gradual loosening of certain restrictions. It's got people encouraged. It's got people thinking it's okay to to, to be lax. And, and 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 in some regards, I'm sure it is. You know, if you're if you're going for a walk, going to a park, whatever, you know, that's cool, man. But I worry when I see a bunch of people that are clearly not living in the same household hanging out in a Tim Hortons parking lot. I'm sacrificing, Frank's sacrificing, everybody else is sacrificing. And I don't want these sacrifices to be in vain. That's not what I'm doing this for. I'm doing this so that we can all get back to life, you know? Anyway, I have been on for 30 minutes so far today. I'm going to take a break. Thank you for watching. I hope you are enjoying the live streaming so far. Uh, I'm going to go inside and maybe listen to some music or read a comic or open an action figure for a little bit. Thank you for Jeff Steven, for, uh, to Jeff Steven for calling in for the interview this morning. That was great. And uh, he is only the first of several guests, I hope. I know I've got at least one more guest today, but um, I'd like to see some more. So thank you for watching. And uh, as usual, I will edit together and post this live stream on YouTube when it is time. Rock and roll, thank you very much. We got gadgets to play with today. We are going to have some fun. Good morning. Or afternoon. Wherever you are. Whoever. Ah, it's Frankie Toms. Okay, so I'm back. And um, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to... Uh, mentioned earlier... Neighbor. Mentioned earlier that I wanted to open these two guys... Um, let's take a look at the back of the card real quick, though. On the back of the card, you can see all the other figures available from this part of the reaction line, the Transformers part. You can get Jazz, Starscream, Soundwave, Megatron and Optimus Prime, and Bumblebee. Um, my buddy Jason was just at Heroes Comics in London this week. They've just reopened. And they have a ton of reaction figures at Heroes Comics in London. So Frankie Toms, um, you know what? I don't know when I'm going to see Jason, when I'm going to go to Heroes Comics with him. But if, if Frankie Toms wants to go to Heroes Comics in London with me, let's make it a road trip too. I mean, you can probably go there every week and, and, and find new stuff to buy. Um... I'm going to keep the cards for these after I open them because I like the cards. I think they're really nice. Um, yeah, let's, but let's, uh, let's get them open, shall we? Shall we or shall we wait for more people? I think there's, I don't know how many people are watching right now. I can't tell. Maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait. We'll just talk for a bit about this reaction line. You know what? Um, I'm going to get my phone. 
we are going to look at some some of the figures in this line. Army of Darkness. On Andre the Giant? Andre the Giant. Two different versions of Andre the Giant. They've got like a six-figure Army of Darkness set. Um, three different versions of Ash. A couple versions of Evil Ash. And then um, one of the monsters. Oh, wow. Um... Andre the Giant, two figures. There's even more Transformers figures. There's Shockwave and um, Alpha Trion. Um, Pit Witch is that uh, Army of Darkness figure. Uh, then we have Motorhead, the War Pig, Anthrax among the Living Guy. A bunch of Aliens figures. There's Vasquez. There's Ripley. A um, bunch more Alien figures. Aliens. Um... Red Dawn? Peanuts! Peanuts! Uh, some more Transformers figures. There's Jetfire. Uh, there's Shrapnel. Frenzy. There's a ton of Transformers figures in this line. Hey, Kevin Smister, how you doing? We're talking about the reaction action figure line. I'm just going over... Grimlock! Agnostic Front. Werewolf Biker. Major League Baseball. Oh my god, like there's literally everything in this line. King Diamond. Beavis and Butthead. Teen, is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? No, that's Toxic Avenger, I believe. Wow. There is so much. There's the ghost figure that I want. Papa Emeritus. He's hard to find. The Misfits. There's another Motorhead. There's an Iron Maiden. There's a bunch of Iron Maidens. Holy shit, there's like six Iron Maidens. More aliens. I can go on and on and on. I mean, whew. Anyway, shall we get these open? Let's stop yammering and get these open. Gently. Gently now we open the figure. These go for about 20 bucks a pop. So I'm not... Uh, destroying a tremendous amount of value here. But I am going to keep the cards because they're nice and they've got that uh, sort of like a silver silverized print. I always have trouble getting figures off the card nice and cleanly. There we go. He comes with his uh, his rifle, as he should. Kind of like the old Star Wars figures. There's the figure with the the rifle taped taped to the side. So it's uh, it's a five point articulation figure. Hello. There's your. There's your five points of articulation right there. So we'll see how many people are watching. Four! Hey, four! That's good. There's your five points of articulation. And, um... Yeah, he can hold his rifle, too. There you go. Optimus Prime reaction figure. Very similar. Kevin Smister, uh, have you done Uncle Don Don's top 11 list yet? No. Um, I was just talking about that with my family. We're aiming for this afternoon. Um, if you can't make it, that's fine. I understand. I kind of have to work around my family schedule. So it will happen when everybody is uh, ready to uh, participate and, and or watch at the same time. Um, we are planning on doing a family Zoom session between 4 and 5. So I would hope to do the Uncle Don uh, countdown before the Zoom session. If that answers your question. So there we go. There's Optimus Prime in the reaction figure line. You might say to yourself, that doesn't look like a lot for 20 bucks. You might be right. Inflation, you know. I want to get a bunch of these um, from the entire line. Because then you can have them fight each other or team up with each other. 
All right, let's open Megatron. Megatron uh, doesn't have open fists, so he cannot wield Optimus Prime's rifle. However, Megatron does come with his signature fusion cannon. And there be Megatron. He has the same five points of articulation. Ooh, stiff head, though. Uh, as Optimus Prime. Same five points as he does the Abbey Road. Um, I don't know. It looks like his fusion cannon is attached to his arm, so it's not something you can remove. It is on his arm as such. So he can certainly wield it into battle, although it looks kind of goofy hanging off the side of his arm instead of the top of his arm as he used to do it in the cartoon. Gotcha! I'll try my best to catch it, says Kevin Smister. Well, you, uh, I appreciate that sentiment, and if you can, that's great. Um, it won't be a long countdown. We're not obviously playing any songs, but well, I, I've talked to my family about it a little bit, and each song has a little story to it, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so here's Optimus and Megatron together. You can see, you can see they are identically the same size. And you know, one thing about the original Transformers line, Megatron and Optimus were not from the same original action figure line. Optimus Prime, uh, uh, Optimus Prime was from a Japanese toy line called Diachron, Diachron. Megatron was from a line called Microman, which, you know, in in, uh, in our country, that came to us as Micronauts. The idea is uh, Micronauts, our little guys, also actually happen to be right around this exact size. Um, and Micronauts, the idea is that that is their real size. So all of these weapons and, uh, and tape decks, things like that, those were real life objects in the Micronaut world. So if you had Megatron, the original gun, it was a life-size gun that was for your Microman collection. So when these two lines and a few others as well were combined together into the Transformers, Optimus Prime and Megatron, they don't really scale that well. I mean, they kind of do, but um, a lot of the figures don't scale well at all. Now with the reaction line, they all scale. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? How many people are watching? Four still. Hey, that's fantastic. Hope you're having a good morning. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Ah. Inside, I've got the uh, Dennis D. Young CD set to uh, set to listen on my computer. So. When I'm done this portion of the live stream, I will be going inside to listen to that Dennis DeYoung album. Um, I have to eat some breakfast, too. Any suggestions? I just don't know what to eat. I don't know what to eat this morning. I just don't know. It's a beautiful morning, though. You know what? We're going we're gonna to take this camera. I'll show you what a beautiful morning it is. Oh, look at that sky. Can you see? Can you see how beautiful that sky is? Not really. It's too bright. Maybe if I aim it over here a bit more. Beautiful blue. Bright, shiny day. Sunshiny day. Gorgeous day. Yeah. You know, I could just talk into it like this, I suppose. Um, and I've got bad lighting, though. Problem with these live streams is you gotta kinda adjust as the day goes on, as the lighting changes. Um, maybe this evening I'll be using my selfie light. I, you know what? I showed off my selfie light in a uh, kind of a, a midweek live stream, but 
Let me go get it for you. Just a second. This is the uh, the last piece of tech gadgetry that arrived from my Amazon tech order, and it's just a light that clips to your cell phone like this, like that, charges with a USB, and there are a couple of different settings. There's this bright white one. Look at look at look at how look at that. You can see how the selfie light works. <laughs> it's got the bright white setting then it goes to this uh, more blue which is my preferred one this nice soft nice soft blue lighting i might use this in my let me see how it puts the, the reflection in my glasses isn't that nice i might use this with my uh come evening and then it has this orange one that i call the donald trump setting which makes me look bright orange like donald trump it's fantastic it's the best you're gonna love it fuck you donald trump <laughs> Oh my god, we got political here. <laughs> and uh, that's it. I don't know how much I paid for all this damn selfie live streaming equipment, but I I bought it. Hey, I own it now. I want to get some lighting for behind me as well. Both indoors and out, you know. Just kind of have something behind me to uh, draw the eye. Um, see, I've got some comments earlier today about St. Anger. From Leo Goldvik. Uh, hey Mike, good morning. Hetfield and Ulrich must re release, uh, sorry, remix Saint Anger and restore the bass in Injustice. Good songs on both albums that deserve a proper mix. You know, I'm inclined to, to agree with you. Just to offer it as a bonus disc. Um, Mike Mailer says, I've been saying the same thing for years, bud. And then Leo responded, totally agree. Agree. I don't know what James and Lars are waiting for. It's their pride. They don't want to admit that they made a mistake on St. Anger. That's my opinion. Check out the web and search Injustice with Baselines Restored. I don't think Jason played on that, but the songs sound very powerful. Check that out, too. Um, and a buddy of mine uh, in the UK, Michael Bowdery, left an amazing comment here about St. Anger, Metallica. Sorry I just jumped topics there. I really didn't give you much heads up that I was jumping topics there. Um, Michael Bowdery says about St. Anger, This is the only time I've ever tried to buy an album in a record shop and the sales assistant has talked me out of a purchase. I pointed out the good value for money because it comes with a CD and a DVD of uh, them playing the entire, entire album in rehearsal live. I pointed out the good value for money and the bonus disc to which he said, Great! Means you can listen to the same shit twice. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so yes, we were talking about Saint Anger a bit because it had its the anniversary of its release uh, earlier this week, and um, I remember when it came out. I was fine with Saint Anger, although I then and now I cannot listen to the entire album in one sitting. It's such a harsh album; it gives me a headache. Uh, so, but I, you know, I don't shit on the album. I think there's some good stuff on it. Um. Not everybody agrees, but I, I remember when St. Anger came out, and um, I, my comment at the time was that people didn't like it because they had high school syndrome, meaning they only like Metallica the way they used to sound when they were in high school. Um, St. Anger returned the band to a heavier sound, faster beats, blah, 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 but fans didn't, uh, didn't latch onto it because um, it was so pandering to the modern market. They dropped all the guitar solos. And if you watch the uh, Some Kind of Monster movie, you can see that Kirk Hammett did record at least one solo for the album, and it was a fucking good solo. So, in my opinion, Metallica made a mistake by not putting any guitar solos on St. Anger. As Kirk Hammett said in that movie, not having solos dated the album to that time, the early 2000s. Not the greatest time in, in music. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly, sugar, baby. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, Crazy Town. Shifty Shellshock. Was that the guy's name in Crazy Town? Shifty Shellshock? I think that was his. Shifty Shellshock. Is... I think, you know what, we're Googling this to confirm that that's the motherfucker's name, Shifty Shellshock. I'm going to say it is. Fucking 
Crazy Tim. Yeah, that's his fucking name. His real name is Seth Brooks Binzer, better known by his stage name, Shifty Shellshock. There he is. There's Shifty. Fucking crazy town, man. Fucking crazy town. Stupid 90s rock. Bullshit stupid 90s rock. So it seems the family is kind of like going for four-ish on the Uncle Don Don countdown. That seems to be the... Uh, that seems to be where we're headed with that. Ah. Anyway, so we've done some unboxings this morning. I've got some action figures to, uh, to play with. I've got a Dennis DeYoung album to listen to. I think I am going to uh, go inside and listen to my Dennis DeYoung album. It is currently 9.30 in the morning. I've uh, done about uh, 50 minutes, 5 zero minutes of live streaming so far, and uh, hopefully lots more to come. Um, the Uncle Don Don Countdown, we're aiming for about 4-ish. And if you missed it, check out the... Uh, the earlier live stream, which I will be editing all this stuff together for YouTube later on, but check out the earlier portion of this live stream where I got to interview Jeff Steven about his um, thank you to healthcare workers uh, videos that he's been making every single day. Every single day, a brand new video. Brand new concept for the video in addition to a brand new video. They don't repeat the same ideas. So, you know, uh, big ups to uh, Jeff Steven once again. And uh, please go check out that earlier live stream where I interviewed Jeff Steven about this uh, this little project that him and his family have been doing to salute to uh, the frontline healthcare workers. Um, John T. Snow uh, suggested that I salute them as well, so uh, maybe I'll do that closer to uh, the. I, I believe people do that in the evening, um, so I'll do that. I'll get my gen, and uh, we'll salute the healthcare workers tonight. That's about it for now. I'm going to go inside and listen to some Dennis D. Young. And uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, a bit later. I'm sure I'll be on later this morning. Take it easy. Hello. To the brain. We're live. I'm uh, trying out some equipment here, trying out this new camera. Uh, stand that I have. I'm not sure who's all watching. Let's invite some people because I can do that this time. Alright, we've invited some people. Who's watching? Identify yourself. Chris Sar. No Chris Sar. How are you doing, Chris Sar? I'm testing. This is part of today's live stream. We are we are live now, and I'm testing my new camera stand thing. I don't particularly like the angle here, but. You know, we're just testing things out. We're trying some tech. Um, just finished listening to the new Dennis D. Young album. This is great. This is fantastic. Um, I'm not sure if it's a concept album. I don't think it is, but it might be. It's a... Uh, Yada yada blah blah woof woof. Fake news, fake facts, new days, new hacks, fake truth, fake lies. Guess what? Surprise! Fake fun, fake facts. Hey look, new tax. Fake red, fake blue, fake me. Well, fake you. Hey, good morning, Mike Kovacic. How are you doing? <laughs> Uh, I was just saying, I just finished listening to the new Dennis D. Young album, 26 East. Um, it's very good. It's very sticks. 
Um, the very last track, AD 2020, is uh, essentially a stick song. Um, yeah, this is this is great. I hope it does well for Dennis. Um, there's, this is called Volume One. There's a second volume of this coming. Um, and Dennis says that this is probably, you know, the, the two volumes are probably his final album. Which I guess, you know, that's realistic, uh, considering uh, people age, you know. And it takes a long time to make a new album in this day and age. They don't just crank them out one a week like they used to in the old days. <laughs> um, hey Bob Purston, how are you this morning? Uh, we're trying out some equipment here and we just finished listening to the new Dennis D. Young album, 26 East. Volume 1, which is quite excellent. Um, it's hard to breathe in this mask. <laughs> I will admit that. I have uh, been having trouble breathing, even with the uh, assisted device. Still having trouble breathing. And the reason that we're on the, uh, the phone instead of the uh, the big, the better cameras, because we're trying out some, we're trying out the new camera stand. Um, I do believe that uh, this will work. I can, uh, I can, uh, I can see that I am able to share the screen with a number of people. Um, Mike Kovachuk. Too much wind, can't hear you. Crap. Crap. Okay. Well. I guess we'll just have to, uh, we'll have to change some things here, won't we? Uh, try that. There we go. There we go. Oh! Hopefully that solves the wind problem. Does this, does this solve the wind problem? cranking his tunes a little too loud when I want to talk about the new Dennis DeYoung album 26 East I hope the audio is okay now I hope it is a bit breezy out here today new Dennis DeYoung album 26 East fantastic pick this up from Encore Records I am having trouble breathing in this mask I picked this up from Encore Records um, I have the Tommy Shaw album, Ambition, uh, on the computer now, uh, lined up to listen to next. But I really like this. It's a very sticks like um, There's some fantastic material on here. Um, you, My Love was a great song. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like this album. So well done. Well done to Dennis DeYoung. Um, yeah. You can see that, you know, neighbors are walking by and there's a guy wearing a Darth Vader helmet talking to himself. That's kind of fun, don't you think? I think that's kind of fun. Neighbors walking by, guy talking to himself in a Darth Vader helmet. You know, whatever. Oh, there's a neighbor over there kind of, kind of staring. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I think we're we're live. We are live. We are live. We are live. All right. We are live. There we go. Okay. Well, we're just gonna play around with some tech. I got a whole bunch of stuff plugged into my laptop and uh, I need more USB ports available so here's this whatever this thing a three three port US, USB expansion so um, I feel like charging my phone at the same time that I feel like live streaming. We are live. Hey, Mike Kovacek. Um, 
but I need more USB ports. So, plug this guy in. I learned something uh, on YouTube the other day. Um, to tell which side of the USB um, connection goes up, it's the one with that little USB logo on it. You see that? One side is featureless. The other side has that little tiny... You pro oh, there we go. You can see it in the light. That little tiny USB logo. That's how you tell which side goes up. My laptop only has three USB ports. Now it has, I guess, five. Um, all right. So plugging in the phone. There we go. And uh, looks like this uh, this work also. This is nice. It also works for um, data. You ever find that certain USB cables can't do data? Took me years, but I finally figured it out. Says Rob Daniels. Now here's the trick, though. The problem is, sure, you can see the USB logo on the. You can, I'm just having trouble here. <laughs> you can see the little USB logo on the top there. That indicates that that's the top. But what if it's a vertical, a vertical USB slot? Then you're in trouble. Um, okay. So you ever notice that some USB cables don't carry data at all? Uh, good thing. At least that port carries data. I can connect to it with my laptop. But you know, let's say I just need more. I I need more length. I need more length. <laughs> These are nice. Look at that heavy duty cable. There's your logo, that means it's on the top. There's a logo, that means it goes on the top. So, you know, let's say I'm not happy with the, the length. The length. Um, plug in top to top. And, uh, Plug this in top side up, and we are now connected with a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of cable. And um, let's see if, it, if I've got data connection or if it's just power. No, I got a data connection. That's fantastic. So there we go. I'm happy with all that stuff. And I've even got a selfie light. I was showing this off earlier, my selfie light. See, now I can. There you go. There's what I needed another another port for. I needed another port to charge my selfie light. <laughs> there we go. And uh, you can see it is charging by that dim red glow. <laughs> Utterly ridiculous. This is all for this is all for the live stream. <laughs> cables everywhere I'm just you know I'm not I'm not actually gonna use all these cables here right now there's no need for that much cable but I'm just demonstrating some of these things I bought because the cable on that webcam is rather short and when I've got everything set up on my desktop computer there's just there's not enough cable between USB port and uh, the camera the USB ports down on the ground and the cameras up here and there's just not enough cable so I needed some uh, extension cables. cool Cool, huh? Let's see. Um, again, I can't see how many people are watching. I can only see your comments. Um, but on my phone, I can see how many people are watching. And it looks like two of you. Hey! <laughs> Good morning. It's still morning. Um, I was leafing through my... Um, Marvel Infinity Gauntlet comic there, the uh, the six issue um, trade paperback. Yeah, oh, the artwork's gorgeous in there. I can't wait to read that. Cannot wait. And I was listening to that Tommy Shaw album a little bit inside as well. And uh, sonically, it's brilliant. Uh, Terry Thomas was his uh, producer and co-writer and um, co-musician on that album. And they made, they did a fantastic job. What an album so far. So far, what a great sounding album for sure. Um, so what else is going on? Uh, well, we're going to be doing the Uncle Don Don countdown at around four o'clock this afternoon. 
I'm gonna have a special guest for that, and um, that one's gonna be that one's gonna be special for the family as well. Looking forward to counting down the Uncle Don Don. It's gonna be a Nigel Tufnell top ten, as usual. Um, what else? What else is going on here? Well, it's a beautiful day. I've ha I had a hard time showing this off earlier, but it is a gorgeous day outside. Oh. Bright, sunny, sparkling, sparkling day. Different shirt. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Um, it's a little chillier than uh, I was hoping, but we'll survive. It's just. Uh, a little chillier than the one week where I was out here live streaming the entire day a couple weeks ago so um what else is going on here um I've shown you everything that I've got in the mail I don't really have anything else to to, to uh to show right now so I'll just uh I'll talk for a bit I don't know how many people are watching uh, there's nobody watching shit I'll hang on. I'll hang on. I'll await your return. Oh shit! It's been a hell of a week, you know, with the uh, with Uncle Don's passing. It's been a hell of a week. Um, it was also an eventful week as far as uh, Jen's health goes. The seizures were were not good uh, this week. And um, we figure that there was a day at some point this week where she missed her medication. And the following day, um, she had a really bad seizure. And it's, it's really strange. Uh, seizures are not necessarily what you think they are from television. Or even what you've read. Um, she was functional during the seizure. She was walking around. She was putting on her shoes. She was... <laughs> just not really aware that she was having a seizure <laughs> and uh, it, it's strange you know you can talk to the person but they don't understand what you're saying and they have an idea in their head of they're trying to do something but it's not something they should really be doing in that state of mind oh, so that was an eventful day it was not um, living with uh, living with epilepsy is not an easy thing I will uh, be open about that. I've said that many times, but um, you know, we cope, we deal. I buy a lot of shit off Amazon <laughs> to, to cope and deal. It's how we cope and deal. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's so yeah, it's been a bit of a rough week, and I I, I worry a lot, a lot about. Uh, social distancing which just seems to have gone out the window um i haven't said a lot this week regarding uh the protests and the situation down in the united states etc um i've argued i've argued it out on twitter a bit with a few people but i haven't really made any broad general statements uh so you know i will say this i will say that black lives matter and I would take a knee. I uh, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And the 80s gave us Star Trek The Next Generation. And that taught me about a more optimistic future. Star Trek The Next Generation. Star Trek The Original Series was the first one to really in, well I mean it was the first Star Trek but it, it began the integration of races on the Enterprise with Lieutenant Uhura on the bridge Sulu you know um, and then Star Trek The Next Generation just basically said everybody you know come on, come on board um and I really loved that message of positivity and optimism and equality. 
Haha, did you hear that? Something disconnected. I don't know what. Hopefully not the audio. Um, anyway, I miss, I miss feeling optimistic. How long ago was Rodney King? 30 years? And you know, Rodney King was just a situation where there was a guy with, that happened to be, happened to have a camera. Nowadays, everybody has a camera. Now, how much, how much stuff did we miss because there weren't, there weren't cameras available around? So, you know, I, I, I decided earlier in, uh, to, I, you know, all these cables and shit, I don't know. I got too much stuff all connected all at once. <laughs> but anyway, um, I decided earlier on that 2020 was going to be a less political year for me because I'm quite sick of it. And, you know, there's an American election this year and I'm quite, been, I've been sick of that since the last election. <sighs> Black Lives Matter. And that's all I'm going to say. I am with you. I'm with you. Um, yeah, so that's 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 the political speech for today. Whoever is watching, I don't know who you are, but that's the political speech for today. That's it. I'm not going to say anything else. I am really, really mesmerized by the blue sky, which I can't seem to get on camera. It's so blue. It's beautiful. I love the sound of the birds. Happy to share the sound of the birds with you. <laughs> As if you don't have your own birds. I was out here li earlier in the Vader helmet and my neighbors were giving me weird looks like who's the guy in the Vader helmet and why. <laughs> because I'm live streaming. Because I'm bringing entertainment to you. I'm bringing entertainment to the masses. Just waiting for... Uh, some, I don't know if you can see the neighbors walking by. I... I get a reflection of them in my glass door so I can see when there's a, a neighbor walking by. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for Jen to uh, decide that she's up for the day and we will uh, figure out what we're doing for lunch. Maybe I'll order in something. I, uh, I enjoy supporting local. We've lost a few restaurants this year, you know, some of my favorite restaurants, and um, I, I, I worry about the economy as much as you, as much as everyone else. I'm glad that more things are opening, and I really hope it's not premature. Um, I worry that it may be premature. I worry that we may see a spike because of all the protests. Um, there's no question that there was a lot of tight groups of, well not even tight groups, it was just a large mass of people, very tight large mass of people in the photographs that I saw. Um, I'm told that there were other uh, parts of the protest where there was socially distant. I'm talking about the local Kitchener protest right now, I'm not talking about anywhere else in the world. Um, I understand that there were parts of it where people were very socially distant, and that's great, but I, I, I worry. I worry that we're going to see a spike. Protests are important. Protests are a cornerstone of democracy. Without a freedom of speech, we're nothing but slaves. Um, but I worry. I really do. Um, we're not over this COVID thing yet. And I hope we don't see a spike. If we don't see a spike, I will be tremendously relieved and happy. I will then say I think we're safe to start opening things up but until we until we know until we're over this hump and see what these uh, large gatherings have done then we, we really we don't know yet and I'm glad that the uh, provincial government is uh, being smart and waiting this out and being patient but at the same time again I am worried about my favorite businesses I'm worried about my friends jobs It's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting time to be alive, isn't it? An interesting time to be alive. I thought 9-11 was an interesting time to be alive. We've now seen over 100,000 deaths in the United States. 
vastly outnumbering the death toll of 9-11 and all the wars that followed. The worldwide death toll from this thing. But we're going to make it. We are going to make it. Humans survive. We always have. <sighs> Enough downer talk, right? Why the fuck am I doing so much downer talk? Let's talk about selfie lights, man. <laughs> I believe it's already back up to charge. So this just clips on your phone. I've already shown this off a little bit today. Just clips on your phone and then you can you can take a selfie. You can take a selfie. See how nice and well lit I am for the selfie. I I wanted to uh, I wanted to experiment with different lights and whatnot for uh, for future live streams. Um, I want to get some strip lighting for behind me. Give you something to look at besides my face. I don't know how much this thing costs on Amazon. I uh, bought a bunch of uh, electronic shit that I've been uh, unboxing and testing and showing off today. Um, this also incidentally will clip to uh, clip to the uh, monitor of my laptop in case I feel like the, I need some backlighting there so you can see the reflection off my hand. Um, there we go. I'm fully, fully lit with the selfie light. I also thought it might be kind of useful for um, uh, lighting up Star Wars action figure shoots because Uncle Meat has requested that I do lots more Star Wars action figure shoots. Here's the uh, the phone stand that I was fiddling around with earlier. Flexible legs. Try to get them back into a perfect tripod though is a challenge. And um, plenty of uh, movement up here. Plenty. What the fuck is that? Cell phone sits in here. And every joint is uh, one that you can tighten and uh, fix solid so that your phone doesn't move around. And I, uh, I'm hoping to, uh, to do a little animation. This thing came with... Uh, a little USB controller that uh, triggers your camera so you don't have to touch it. Because every time you touch a camera when you're trying to animate it, you're moving it. And it changes ever so slightly the uh, the frame. Anybody who's done animation knows what I'm talking about. So this will be fun. I'm going to try to animate some stuff. Maybe a transformer. Some of these new modern transformers are a bitch to transform though. Like, way too hard. To do a uh, to do just a little animation with for me, but if I can find a, a nice little spot to uh, to do this uh, animation, I will. Yeah, why not? This is called a UB size tripod S. Um, there we go. You can see that UB size tripod S, and. Uh, I just took a chance. It looked like it might suit my needs, and I, it, it does. The USB thing I didn't actually care about when I bought it. I wasn't thinking about animations at that time. I was just thinking about some way to mount my my phone as a camera for when I'm live streaming. So this will work. The USB thing is a bonus. I, um, I have too much stuff connected. My... my Computer makes my computer keeps making the uh, disconnect sound. Anyway, uh, I've been live here 20 minutes for this spurt. I uh, think I'm gonna play with this and try to do some uh, animations. I'll let you know how that goes. Thanks for watching, whoever you are. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get some lunch. I'm starving. I need some lunch. Let's do some lunch. Ciao. Well, ah, ah, ah. Hey, hey, hey. Do, 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 do.
Ah ah ah, hey hey hey, do 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 do. Is anybody watching? Is anybody watching? Is anybody watching the show tonight? I have to adjust my setting as the sun moves around. So bad. It's a beautiful day still. A little windy. I don't know who's online. Is anybody watching? Is anybody watching the show tonight? Ah. Well, we're just hanging out here. We're just uh, getting ready for the Uncle Don Don countdown. Roughly four-ish. That's what we're aiming for. Um, I've been really enjoying this day. It's been a beautiful day. I just finished watching a funny movie. I finished watching Seth MacFarlane's uh, Million Ways to Die in the West, which is a very, very funny movie. It's hilarious. Trust me. If you like Family Guy, that kind of humor, you'll love it. Liam Neeson as Clench Leatherwood, the bad guy. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I'm just, uh, I'm just having a blast here today. I've been reading a little bit of the Infinity Gauntlet comic book. I've been, uh, I just, oh, you know what, I'll be right back. I'm going to show you what I had for lunch. This, my friends, this was a turkey wing. Oh dear, was it ever good. Look at all that sauce. That's uh, Paul Newman's. Newman's only. That's what I like. Turkey wing for lunch. That was good. Eric Litwiller says, Ted sucks. Well, I say you suck, Eric Shitwiller. Anyway, that's what I had for lunch. Turkey wings. Yay, food commentary, says Eric Litwiller. Thrilling update. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Well, you tuned in at the right time because uh, I was thinking about maybe trying to do some animation. Animation with some characters. Um, I have this little USB, or sorry, Bluetooth thing. And um, I use that in conjunction with my phone I just push this little button here and that didn't oh I have to turn it on would be the uh, the other thing it helps when you turn things on you can tell by the little light um, so if I go like this hang on. Why is this, fucking, this is trickier than it looks There we go. Come on, there we go. Come on. Why is this not working? Wow, I'm doing a great tech demo today, aren't I? Fuck. I don't know. I have no idea why this isn't working. It should. Oh well. So much for me doing animations, I guess. No, it's not working. Oh, it did! It worked! Hang on. 
Maybe it took a while there for the Bluetooth to connect. Fuck. Piece of shit. It worked the other day. Alright, well, you know what? All that praise I was heaping on this little device earlier. I, uh, I take it all back. I take it all back. It's a bullshit device. Now I'll try reconnecting the Bluetooth. See if that does anything. Yeah, okay. I, maybe, maybe, maybe I needed to re-sync the Bluetooth device. No, this is officially a piece of shit. Oh, wait. There we go. Pushing the wrong button. There we go. Finally. Tech demo. Hooray! Hooray for tech demo! Eric Litwiller is being his usual encouraging self. Rob Daniels, hello. This is just exciting. It's the first Star Trek movie. Just waiting for V'ger to show up. The humanity, you're a bullshit device. Thanks, guys. So should we do some uh, set up some animation and uh, let Eric Littler, Will, Littler, Shitwiller watch me work, watch me animate? Should we do that? <laughs> I think he's going to be a piece of crap annoyance if I do. So uh, I probably won't. Hooray, says Robert Daniels. Yes, I got it to work. I got it to work. Beautiful day today. So what's going on? You guys, I haven't talked to you guys yet today. What's going on with you guys? Is uh, is uh, is Eric doing well today? And Ted doesn't suck, by the way. You suck. Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. Rob wants to see me animate Baby Yoda. Actually, Rob, what I was thinking about doing was maybe animating some Transformers. But G1s work better for that. Um, because the tra <coughs> excuse me, the transformation is a bit more simple than some of my masterpiece figures. So I was thinking about animating some uh, some G1s before I do the Uncle Don countdown later on. Um, thus, my clue to make like a tree and get out of here. Ah, Eric, sorry, buddy. I I, I like animating figures, man. Like waiting for breakfast to show up. Mel's Diner today. Scott, you're having breakfast at 2.30 in the afternoon? Eric Litwiller says, Ted is so overrated. I don't... I, I, rating, I don't know. Like, well, is it rated? I, I don't know. I don't know how people rate it. I know I found it hilarious. Um, especially uh, all the different references to things that I love, which is what Seth MacFarlane is good at and what he suckers me in with. I don't think Ted's overrated. I don't know what it's rated. I, th I thought I got shit ratings, to be honest with you. Um, Scott Pedal, I like to party. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Garth. Rumble, transform! Um, yeah, I, I might do Rumble. I might do Frenzy. I might do uh, one of the other cassette bots. I don't know. I don't know. I might do something. Um, I would like stink job, says Eric Litwiller. I don't know what's stink job. What does that mean? Good. Uh, I guess I said good job, and he says stink job, I guess, is what he's saying. Um, yeah, Eric Shitwiller, uh, the stink job. I will stink job you in the buttocks. Uh, but anyway, you know, uh, I disagree with Eric Litwiller, because I, I laugh at Ted, and I laugh at Ted, too. Um, in some ways, I like uh, Ted 2 better because uh, Ted 2 has Michael Dorn from Star Trek The Next Generation in it, a show we were discussing in the last live uh, portion of this live stream day. Um, yeah, so uh, Eric Littwiller can uh, fuck off. Uh, Scott Peddle likes to party. He's eating his breakfast at 2.30 in the afternoon. Where did you order from, Scott? I'm curious. McDonald's? McDonald's? <laughs> Robert Daniel says, yikes. I think that was in regard to my stink job comment to Eric. You're a buttocks, says Eric. I'm curious, Scott, where you're getting your breakfast. That's what I want to know. That's what inquiring minds want to know this afternoon. Where did you get your breakfast? Who is delivering it? 
four people watching. Wow, this is riveting. I've noticed that the live streams have, um, um, you know, they've been a lot, a lot fewer people watching. I don't know if that's because I'm doing it at the uh, time of day when people don't want to be inside watching shit. Mel's Diner, nice. Or I don't know if it's just because people seem to be acting as if the pandemic's over. I think it's maybe a bit of both. I don't know what uh, I don't know what the summer's going to be like, folks. Might be sitting here live streaming on a Saturday in the summer because, um, you know, because we're still in lockdown. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Ah, uh, you know, so I think I'm going to do some animation with my new devices. Okay, I'm going to fuck right the fuck off, or as Getty Lee says at the end of, end of exit stage left, thank you, very thank you, good night. Good night, Eric Littler. Maybe you'll show up a bit later when I do the Uncle Don Don countdown at around 4 o'clock. That would be nice. Hopefully around 4 o'clock. It all depends on my family schedule. Neighbor. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to do some animation. See how that goes. This will be uh, This will be an experiment. Wish me luck. Picard out. All right, we're ready to rock. We are ready to rock. Um, let me just kill the music. There we go. That was Masked, the album by Catherine Ladano. And I'm wearing this hat for a reason. It's a little beat up. But uh, there we go. There we go. It's a little bit better. Hey guys, how are you doing? So this is the Uncle Don Don Cut Off Shorts Countdown. And um, the reason I'm wearing this hat is I found out this week, it's funny how you find out things about um, uh, your family that you never knew before. Uh, I, I didn't know that Uncle Don Don's nickname with his friends was Cowboy uh, because he was such a huge fan of the Dallas Cowboys. I didn't know that. So... Um, that's why I'm wearing this hat right now. I'm wearing it in honor of Cowboy. Cowboy Winter would have been, I guess, his nickname. I didn't know that. I found that out this week. And uh, today's beverage is uh, Nespresso. It is, uh, this is called um, uh, Columbia is the name of this blend. We have Catherine Ladano watching and we are going live at T minus four o'clock sharp. Um, yeah, so I'll tell you a few things about Uncle Don Don tonight. Uh, he passed away on uh, Wednesday afternoon at Freeport Hospital after a, a fairly long battle with cancer. And he is one of many people that I know who have been lost during this COVID crisis. Isn't that nuts? I, I, have, I have two friends that are probably watching right now who have both lost loved ones during this COVID crisis. This time where you can't even have a proper funeral. Um, so this is this is something that we are doing instead. This is one of the things we are doing instead. Jennifer Ladano is watching. Hello, sweetie pie. <laughs> um, this is one of the things we'll be doing. Uh, when things ease up out there, we'll be doing a proper cel celebration of life. But for now, all I can really do is live stream about my Uncle Don Don. So uh, that's what I'm doing tonight. And uh, I will have a co-host with me to read the countdown. Uh, I'm making one slight change to the countdown. While I was in the kitchen getting my coffee, I decided to make one last minute change to the countdown, just in, in running order, uh, just because I think uh, there's something I want to open with and something I need to end with. So, um, yeah, I'm going to make one minor change. Hopefully, it's, it, throwing this uh, minor change at my mom doesn't, doesn't screw up the countdown too much. Mm. That's good. Now, you know what? Just Just for... Just for the hell of it. Let's see if I can get a good frothy mustache here. Mm. Yeah, uh, no, not really. Oh, um, watched a movie today uh, recommended by my dad. Uh, True Grit, the Coen, the Coen Brothers film. He loved it. Um, he gave particularly high praise to Haley Steinfeld. Um, he also quite liked Matt Damon. And uh, even though he didn't know his name, Josh Brolin, and of course the dude, Jeff Bridges. Uh, I liked uh, True Grit quite a bit as well. Fuck cancer, says Rob Daniels. You said it, my friend. 
you said it. Um, you know, we, we've all, uh, I think everybody here has been touched by cancer in their lives and their family lives. And uh, it, it isn't fun. It, um, it is something that uh, changes, changes you as a survivor and a supporter. It changes you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't see Uncle Don when he was sick too much. Uh, not very much at all. Just, just glimpses, really. And, um, you know, I'm glad that I never saw him really when he was sick. I don't want to remember him that way. I, I know what people look like when they're when they're sick and dying with cancer. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't, I'm glad that I didn't have to see that. And uh, you know, he didn't want to be in pain any longer, and uh, he's not in pain anymore. So, you know, let's celebrate some music that he liked. Um, you know, I'm gonna try something here. I just I just want to try something. Just see if this this work will allow this to happen we'll see see in a second here no okay it's not it's not working it's all good doesn't matter it's almost four o'clock it's almost time um i'm hoping my aunt linda is watching from alberta Hey, the selfie light worked. When my uh, when my big computer monitor turned itself off, timed itself off, the selfie monitor, the selfie light was keeping me uh, well lit. <laughs> Seventeen bucks, well spent. This is the list. Woo, you did. Well, you couldn't read it anyway because uh, it's backwards. It's mirrored right now because I'm on my cell phone. This is the list. Almost time. Hey, Catherine, just so you know, we were listening to Masked earlier. I always let the music run for a little bit before I start. We're listening to some Masked. Let's see who else I can invite here. Why not? Invite everybody. Why not? Right. Well, I'm going to uh, make the call that will start this countdown. And advise the person on the other end of the change in running order. I wanted to advise you of a change before we go live. I, I've decided to switch the running order by uh, just switch two songs around. Number 11 and number 1. I've decided that number 11 we're going to save for the very end because it's the best story. Yep. 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 That's the one. Oh, I've got some comments here. Jonathan Taylor says, what's up, man? You know what? I'm not going to put you on. We're going to start. We're going to put you in the speaker, okay? Jonathan Taylor is currently writing his graphic horror novel. That's pretty cool. Oh, really? He's an artist, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, so Catherine wholeheartedly approves of whatever we're doing here, and uh, I, I don't know if you have seen my attire yet. I'm wearing a cowboy hat. Oh, no. I'm just uh, getting on now. 
Okay, well, I am wearing a cowboy hat in honor of cowboy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, see, like being called cowboy. I learned, I was saying earlier in my preamble working up to this, that sometimes when somebody passes, you learn things about your family that you never knew before, and uh, I never knew about him being called cowboy. Yes. Here's something uh, for you. A guy at work, uh, when his grandfather passed away, he found out his grandfather was a member of the IRA. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, that's something. <laughs> we don't have any of those secrets. Not like that, no. No. Um, now, do we do we know if we have Auntie Linda watching from Calgary? Um, she emailed me back, and she said that... Uh, she said it she'll be ready at four. Okay, so hopefully she is watching now because it is for our time. Hope she didn't think it's for her time. That's two hours from now. Well, I don't think she thinks that, dear. Okay, great. Hey, I've got your picture on. I see the cowboy hat. Oh, that's cool. Jonathan, I don't think you can post pictures on, on the live stream. You can try, but I don't know I don't know how you do it. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Okay, so um, this countdown was suggested by one of my readers, uh, Boppin, whose real name is Brian. And uh, he suggested, after I posted my little eulogy, that we do an Uncle Don Don Cut Off Shorts Countdown. <laughs> because I have that memory of him always walking around in the cut-off shorts at the cottage. Mm -hmm. So um, you have the tracks, I have the tracks, and I'm going to read the stories that go with them. Uh, why don't we start with uh, number 11? And, and just quickly, for everybody who doesn't know, I, I always do 11. We, this is, came from Uncle Meat. Uh, we call it the Nigel Tufnell Top 10, because if you'll remember, Nigel Tufnell, his amps went up to 11. So when we do our Nigel Tufnell Top 10, we start at 11. So, Mom, uh, why don't you start at 11? Okay, number 11. Yeah. Alice Cooper, Teenage Lament, 74. Correct. Um, that was my pick. You have to make sure I say it right, too. Yeah. Uh, you said it perfectly right. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I, I wrote this in, in his eulogy that uh, back in the summer of 89, we were trading tapes for him to record and me to record. And uh, that was one that I grabbed out of his collection was Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. And it was my very first Alice Cooper. My Uncle Don got me into Alice Cooper by, by letting me tape that off of him. And that was one of the songs that jumped out at me right away. It was just really kind of jangly, like old time rock and roll. And I didn't know really what old Alice Cooper sounded like. I expected it to be weird, and I expected it to be different. But I didn't really know that he had, like, old-timey rock and roll kind of songs, too. So Teenage Lament, number seven, uh, 1974, is uh, my number 11 for the Uncle Don Don countdown. Very nice. All right, let's hear number 10. Number 10, Helix. Rock you. Give me an R. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't put these songs in any particular order except that I grouped mine together. I grouped Catherine's together. Uh, so they're not in any real particular order except for the order I wanted to read them. Uh, Rock You is another one of my stories. Um, I wrote this in his eulogy as well. Uh, he was the one that told me that Helix used to be a country band back before they were famous. Which wasn't really entirely accurate. They were really just more of a, a rock and roll band than anything else. But... For years, that haunted me. I worried for years about digging through record collections and finding a Helix album where they were playing country music wearing cowboy hats. <laughs> so, he told you that story, but it wasn't really true? Yeah, it was uh, maybe from a certain perspective. They were more country-ish. They had country-ish tendencies on a couple of songs. But really, they weren't a country band. No, they never were a country band. They were always a rock and roll band. Country-ish. Country-ish, maybe. You know, there were a few cowboy hats in the band. Maybe that's what kind of threw him threw him off. And I believe he told me that he knew somebody who played in the band, which is very likely, because those guys are all local. And it's uh, likely that he was in the same age group as those guys anyway. Okay. Well, you know, one of, you know a couple of them too, don't you? I know a couple of the guys that came later. I think oh. if he knew anybody that played in the band, he would have known people that played in the early version of the band before they became famous. Okay, so uh, and I've met a couple of those guys, but like I don't know them. I've just met them at shows. Okay. Um, doesn't didn't Donna's brother play in, that in the early days? That's correct, Don Simmons. Yeah. Okay. Well, Donna is listening to this show, so that's correct. Don Simmons was their original. They had a keyboard player. Okay. When they first started, 
they had a keyboard player and uh don simmons was the keyboard player and yeah our neighbor donna that's that's her cousin you said maybe your uncle knew uh don simmons then. that's probably it oh that's an interesting hmm. let's go to number nine okay number nine deep purple child in time now Catherine, you know this song that's the one that you like that goes do 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 she used to just call that song do 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 when she'd hear it playing in my bedroom <laughs> so here's the story there is that you guys bought me deep purple's uh a best of album for christmas in 1991 and of course he he looked at it and he's like oh mike child in time you have to hear child in time and i had my walkman with me so I, I we were listening to, i was listening to my tunes and then after child in time i was like oh man you were right um the only thing he didn't like about that was it was a live version of child in time on that tape and uh, he never liked live versions he always preferred the originals over the live versions but i told him it was still absolutely an amazing song so you know uncle don again had uh, another huge impact on me with with my love of deep purple he alerted me to Child in Time, and that is actually one of their greatest songs. And to this day, Uncle Meat says that Child in Time, a live version of it, has the greatest guitar solo ever recorded. Really? So that was Uncle Don telling me to check out Child in Time. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to say hi to Vu. Vu is my pharmacist. Hmm. Hi, Vu. Um, all right, let's go to number eight. Okay, number eight is Led Zeppelin. Good times, bad times. I just remember him liking Led Zeppelin. And I think Catherine told me that uh, she gave me a few of his records when she bought the cottage. Uh, oh, and Ryan C. Mitchell says that that Deep Purple song is his favorite. Mm. And Don Simmons is Donna's brother. Yes, didn't we say that? I, I, I said cousin mistakenly. Oh, I thought you said brother, actually. And Michael Lefevre says that Ian Gillen's vocals on Child in Time are totally mind-blowing. Um, okay, uh, sorry, we were at uh, Led Zeppelin. I just remember him liking Led Zeppelin, and I think I have a couple of his Led Zeppelin records in my collection here. Um, when I got the Led Zeppelin box set, he was excited for me, and he wanted to, to tape those. And I remember him being there uh, for that Christmas, checking out my, uh, my brand new Led Zeppelin. They've was probably kind of dumbfounded that here's his nephew checking out music that he was listening to 20 years prior. <laughs> yes, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, number seven. Okay, number seven is Jeff Healy Band, See the Light. Can you see the light? Can you see the light? Uh, this one's from Catherine. Um, Catherine and, and Uncle Don really, they, they swapped tapes quite a bit too at Christmas time and whatnot. I remember him checking out some of her tapes that she got for Christmas. Uh, Catherine says, Uncle Don was really into Jeff Healy when this came out. And I gave him my cassette tape of the corresponding album because he didn't have it and wanted to check, my, check it out. So that's how Uncle Don saw the light with Jeff Healy. Thanks to Catherine. Hmm. Well, number six is another Catherine. Yep. Last Tiger, one of her favorites at that time. And I think still her, one of her favorites to this day. Well, that I don't know about. But anyway, Animal Heart. Yes. Uh, that was from Glass Tiger's third album, uh, which was called Simple Mission. And it was the album where Glass Tiger kind of uh, got a little bit more hard rock. Hi, Linda Mason. She's watching. She might have missed the beginning. I hope oh. not. If she missed the beginning, she can rewind. Yeah. Um, one year for Christmas, she gave Uncle Don Glass Tiger's third album, Simple Mission. I'm not sure if there were any songs in particular he was into, but he did say he liked that album. And I think uh, Animal Heart was pretty much the best song on the album. So that was a good pick by Catherine there. Okay. Are we ready for number five? Number five. Meatloaf. Like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Uh, so Catherine, like I said, uh, she inherited a bunch of his records when she bought the old cottage. And uh, Bat Out of Hell was one of the many that she rescued from the bunkhouse at the cottage that belonged to Uncle Don. 
Um, she didn't know which track to choose, so she just went with the title track, Bad Out of Hell. It's also one of the most famous. Um, I remember Uncle Don didn't particularly like um, ballads and love songs, from what I remember. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have made sense to do Paradise by the Dashboard Light or Two Out of Three uh, Ain't Bad. Um, I will say, I remember um, you and I, we were looking at the pictures from the, the summer of 91 when Cousin Jeffrey got his ear pierced. Oh, yeah. And I remembered something about uh, about Uncle Don that summer. Is He really hated the song Wind of Change by Scorpions. Which, if you don't know, it's the one with the whistling. It's the one that goes... <laughs> and he hated that song. He just thought it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to uh, number four. Okay, this is one I remember being played a lot at the cottage. Kim Mitchell, Patio Lanterns. I think that's appropriate since we had those Patio Lanterns, the colored ones. Yeah, yeah. That were shaped like lanterns, plastic Canadian tire ones that are shaped like lanterns. Yeah. And they get bleached in the sun. Those are the ones. Yep. Uh, Catherine picked this because she also found the album Shaken Like a Human Being by Kim Mitchell in the bunkhouse and she kept it. Uh, those old days hanging out on the patio at the cottage around a fire wouldn't have been complete without the patio lanterns. And the song reminds her of those times, and, and me too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, we have Tanya Gross watching. Say hi to Tanya Gross. Tanya! Yeah! Tanya? Haven't seen Tanya lately, since we haven't been going to Costco. No, no. <laughs> um, I can't believe how quickly we're going through this countdown. I know. Um, well, we, I, we're up to number three, though. We're up to number three. Number three is The Police. The Police, King of Pain. King of Pain. Which I know is one of Catherine's favorite songs. Um, this was another album that she found in the, in the bunkhouse, Synchronicity by The Police. Uh, because it's a fantastic album with too many great songs to just pick one, she went with King of Pain because I know that's one of her favorites. Okay. And Catherine's going, Tanya! <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we down to number two? Yeah, I guess we are down to number two. I can't believe how fast this has gone. Well, you can always talk a little bit after you're finished. Too. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk a bit after we're finished. Okay, In Excess, Guns in the Sky. Yeah. Um, of all the albums she rescued from the bunkhouse, In Excess's Kick is the one that she listens to the most. One of the best songs on it is Guns in the Sky, so I chose it as this album's representation on the countdown. Ah. And it's a rocking song, so that's probably one that he would have liked. Okay. I'll stop here for a second before we go to the number one. Okay. okay. Because this is a good time to mention that, um, you know, it really does suck that you can't do funerals or gatherings right now, but we have this idea that we're going to revisit Uncle Don's records at the cottage this summer whenever we can, whenever it's allowed. We are going to get a uh, USB turntable and plug it into Catherine's laptop and we are going to uh, hang out listening to his records on the patio, the very, very same patio that he listened to them. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, you know, back in those old days, I remember in the bunkhouse they had those two big speakers and the turntable. And we thought we were living in absolute luxury, having a, a record player and speakers in the backyard. <laughs> like, who else had that? I didn't know any. I didn't know anybody else who had that. Grandpa built all that, and I guess I didn't either at that time. No, but uh, I certainly did think it was cool, and I still do. So I'm looking forward to doing that this summer. I remember when we would have those uh, backyard fires. Uh, Grandma would usually get out a bag of uh, plain potato chips. Plain or rippled, one of the two. Uh, she would usually have a bag of potato chips, though, and Catherine and I would uh, eat potato chips, and well, we all had a big old fire. Well, probably before those days, what we used to do was even pop popcorn on the fire. That's very possible. Yeah, we had a outdoor popcorn popper, and yeah, we used to pop popcorn. A lot of it would get burnt, but it was... It was kind of cool to do that. Rob Daniels says, dig out old Don's records. Pardon me? Rob Daniels says, dig out old Don's records. Mm. Which is what we're going to be doing. Yep. 
Okay, well, I guess we'll go on to number one. Okay. So, so this one, uh, this one's special because this was Auntie Linda's pick. Yeah. This, yeah, this is special. <laughs> okay, number one. Da 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 da. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Almost cut my hair. I chose the song. Uh, she chose the group. Um, I I chose the song because he was legendary for his long hair. Long, flowing, curly red hair. That's true. At one time, yeah. And and I felt like when Dad was giving me shit for having long hair, I felt like I was going through exactly what he must have gone through. Oh, did your mother ever give you shit for? You? No, you didn't, because you said huh. your wisdom was, "Look at Uncle Don. Nagging about long hair doesn't work. <laughs> it does the opposite," is what you said. That is exactly right. That's so exactly right. That's why I chose almost cut my hair. But the reason Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young was chosen was yeah. It's interesting because we were talking about those family secrets that we never knew before. So I guess this is the big, the big um, wow story is that uh, they went to go see Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young in Detroit, and. Um, Uncle Don brought something with him across the border that he wasn't supposed to bring with him. And he smoked it. And uh, she was freaking out that uh, he had uh, brought this across the border into the United States. And I wonder how life would have turned out differently if uh, he'd been caught. Oh my gosh. But uh, that was Detroit, apparently. And uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young were across the border and he decided that he needed a little enhancement. <laughs> well that's a good story oh yes so that's why I chose that one for number one because that is the best story ever and uh, <laughs> oh man that's a great list of songs too if somebody made a, a CD of those songs it would be a fantastic CD well maybe somebody could do that maybe somebody should do that Maybe we could do that and put it on CD with a picture of him on the cover. Totally could do that. And we could do um, Uncle Don's collection. I would do that. As a memorial. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be really nice. Well, thanks for co-hosting. This has been a lot of fun. Well, my pleasure. That was fun. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, I guess that's it for you, and I'll uh, I'll start wrapping up. Okay, I will hang up and I can watch the rest of the show. Or you can watch, uh, you know, Father Dowling Mysteries, whatever you feel like watching. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think I've seen all those. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, talk to you later. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, that was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that very much. The Uncle Don Don Cut-Off Shorts Countdown. Uh, thank you to Brian for suggesting that. That was uh, that was a great idea. Uh, I'm really glad you suggested that, and uh, really glad we did that. That is a great list of songs, by the way. Fantastic list of songs. Pardon me. Well, I'm going to keep talking until I finish my Nespresso. One more list. Done. Maybe I'll be back later on tonight after uh, after it gets dark. We'll see what happens. This was the main event for today, though. So, thank you for joining me for this. This is uh, that means a lot to me. And um, I don't know. Maybe we can try. Uh, who's all available here right now? I'm getting messages from people, and I'm uh, let's check let's check messages here. Okay, unrelated. And uh, Max the Axe called me, like, while I was going live. I have no idea why, unless he didn't know I was going live. But, um, yeah, Max the Axe called just as I was going live. Ah, anyway, it's been, a, it's been a week. That it has. Uncle Don passed on Wednesday, and uh, I liked, I, 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 I'm happy to say that uh, we've had a lot, of, a lot of really good memories surfacing since then. And that culminated in the countdown that you just w witnessed. Um, lots of technical issues today, too, though. I couldn't uh, couldn't do this on my computer for some reason. The connection to my camera just suddenly died. Yeah. But the music that you were hearing earlier when I was doing my um, pre-show show was uh, the album Masked 
by Catherine Ladano. And uh, if you would like to buy that album, contact me. I will give you the instructions. You can buy it on CD, vinyl, or if you're boring, digital download. We have had a heck of a day today. This has been a fun day. Uh, it started first thing in the morning with an interview with uh, Jeff Steven. I don't know if you, uh, well, if you were watching this morning, you know who Jeff Steven is. But uh, if you don't know who Jeff Steven is, you can go back and uh, watch the first live stream from the morning. Or watch the uh, YouTube link when I put it up. Jeff Steven lives in Kingston and him and his family have been making videos for the frontline healthcare workers every single day. They make a brand new video every single day cheering on the healthcare workers. Hey, and actually, you know what? Jon Snow, you know nothing, Jon Snow! Jon Snow uh, asked if I would uh, do a shout out to the healthcare workers. Um, yeah, you know what? I will. I will. I will do a shout out to the healthcare workers and I'll do it right now. Apologies. But you are the champions health care and you'll keep on fighting till the end you are the champions you are the champions no time for losers cause you are the champions health care I'm sorry, that's the best I could do. I'm sorry, that was just awful. It's the best I could do. I'm not talented like Jeff Steven and his family are with their videos. But check him out. Um, he got a little bit of uh, notoriety uh, locally for doing this this uh, great thing that he's doing. These cheering for healthcare worker videos. And uh, makes me smile every time I see one. So uh, three cheers to uh, Jeff Steven and, of course, uh, all the... All the Cheers in the world to the healthcare workers. You guys kick ass every single day. Hey, Jeff Steven! Holy crap, he's here right now! <laughs> I was just talking about our uh, our chat this morning. Hello, Jeff Steven! I hope I hope he didn't hear my rendition of, of You Are the Champions. Oh, I sincerely hope he didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I uh, like I said, I'm just going to hang out here long enough to uh, finish my coffee. I might go live again later tonight. I might not. I might just play with my uh, Transformers reaction figures that I unboxed this morning. I am Optimus Prime. It's over, Prime. I uh, did a stop motion video earlier today just to piss off Eric Litwiller and to test out some of my new equipment. That was pretty cool. Um, anyway, it's been a fun day. I feel like if I don't go live later on tonight, I have uh, still accomplished my mission for today. Um, finishing up the coffee. Mmm. Nespresso. This blend is called Columbia. There, all done. Which means I'm done for now. Anyway, maybe we'll see you later on tonight. Maybe we won't. But uh, thank you for watching, everyone. Really appreciate it. And uh, we will catch you next time. <laughs> you see the bugs flying around? It's evening streaming. Evening streaming. Anybody around for an evening stream? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody around for an evening stream? Anybody around for an evening stream? Anybody around for an evening stream? Let's invite people for an evening stream. Anybody there for an evening? Oh, God, it's James Kalen. He's going to ask me to eat worms for $7. Aren't you, James? <clears throat> eat a stick and a worm. And apparently the going rate is $7. James Kalen from the KMA, ladies and gentlemen. 
going rate for eating a worm and a stick is seven dollars. Hello, Mark Kovacek. How are you? Okay, so we got a few people here. Um, it's a good deal in this economy, says James Canlin. He might be right. <laughs> um, so uh, this evening we had the mandarin for dinner. We just had mandolin, man, mandolin. We had mandarin delivery. Oh my god, it was so good, so good. Um, I quite like their uh, pepper steak. I guess it's called the pepper beef. It's so good. I ate like half a thing of those and spring rolls and, and wings and yeah. Um, and I just enjoyed that while reading uh, my Infinity Gauntlet comic. I am now, it's a six issue limited series collected in one book. I have finished five of the six and now I'm heading into the final chapter and I'm savoring, savoring the moment. Um, you know what, I'm going to try something here, see what happens. I, um, I'm really enjoying the Infinity Gauntlet and I just, I don't want it to end. So I just ordered, uh, I believe it's called Thanos Rising. It's a prequel, prequel comic to the Infinity Gauntlet. And, uh, oh, let's try this. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm, I've just ordered that, um, knowing Amazon will be at the house sometime this week, and then next week I will read the, uh... Hey! Hey! Mike Kovacic in the house! Yes, right, buddy. How's it going, man? Going good. I was just saying, I was just reading, uh, my Infinity Gauntlet comic. Oh. What's that? What do you got there? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, hang on, I'll just grab it. Okay, all right. I've just been reading my Infinity Gauntlet comic. Uh, it's a six-issue oh. series collected in one book, and I am now five issues into it. Nice. I don't want it to end. I, like, I've got one, one issue left, and I don't want it to end. I've been, uh... On the uh, the Vader uh, comics. Oh, the the recent ones. Yeah, they were pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I've uh, I've read a lot about those. I'm interested in them as well. Um, I have a soft spot for the original Marvel Star Wars, but uh, they weren't they weren't very good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten to those. I just. Um... I forget exactly what they call, but they're like the Vader ones where it's kind of between when the Death Star blows up and uh, episode, uh, uh, oh, Empire, I guess it would be. Right. When he discovers that Luke is the rebel that destroyed the Death Star and That's begins right. putting He's the looking... puzzle pieces together. Yeah, That's right. That's I'm right. Vaguely familiar with the outline, the general outline. Yeah, it's good. I, I mean, some of the lines are pretty good. I mean, some of the story kind of gets away where they kind of got these, like, cyborg force users. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I one of the issues I've always had when you get into comics and extended media is a lot of the additional characters that um, you don't think should really exist. You know, it always seemed like in the old days with Star Wars fiction, there was always, like, an ex-Jedi that was on the fringes of everything and here they are for this week's villain yeah i i, I kind of i re remember what yoda said in uh, return of the jedi he said when gone am i the last of the jedi you will be so to right. me that really means there shouldn't be any any jedi walking around they really shouldn't be maybe a My force opinion. user but not jedi yeah i know it's a it's a it's a fine line i know i i, yeah. I don't know I just, well, whatever. It, it doesn't matter what I think. They're, they're probably pretty good comic <laughs> books. Um, yeah, it, besides, I mean, it, it even... Sorry, go ahead. 
No, well, I was going to say, I started reading them back when I was at the call uh, center um, working for uh, Parks Canada, Ontario Parks. And between phone calls, I just kind of flipped through them and have a, a good time with those. And I haven't really touched back on them in a bit, but uh, I mean, entertaining, but uh, you know, I got gotcha. you. I used to read the novels in the, like in the 90s. And, uh, you know, there was a time where we didn't miss a single one, but then there just became so many that it was impossible to read them all. But right, definitely right. in the uh, in the uh, '90s, we read every single one, and the best of that entire era was the Timothy Zahn *Heir to the Empire* trilogy, and it was the okay. first post *Return of the Jedi* fiction that we ever got. And of course, it's all completely overwritten now by the sequel trilogy. But at the time, it was the first the first anything we got really post *Return of the Jedi*, and it was awesome. It was really awesome, so it kind of turned me on to Star Wars fiction. But, you know, now, of course, uh, we always knew that if a sequel trilogy was going to be made, a lot of the books would have to be wiped out. Because we always knew that George Lucas was going to go his own way with the characters and not follow a book that somebody else wrote. So, uh, right. you know, I never got too attached to those stories, but, you know, they were good. The books were good. Yeah. I haven't gotten to the books. I, um, I've been reading, uh, reading the uh, Lord of the Rings. Michelle got me, my, my lovely wife got me uh, The yes. Hobbit and the, the trilogy for uh, Lord of the Rings. I've been kind of reading those. So. Oh, yeah. The novel. Yes. In this yes. quarantine time. I've only finished half, actually. It's kind of funny. I oh, stopped at virtually the halfway point. I don't know. I have trouble finishing books, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I... I I still have it. I should probably finish it at some point, but um, I'll finish this tonight. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and I was, I was just saying earlier, I was just saying uh, I, I'm enjoying it so much, I just placed an Amazon order for the the prequel book, which is called, I believe, Thanos Rising. So I've just placed an order okay. for that. I should have it this week sometime. Yeah. Nice. That'd be all right. You have to let I'm, me know how that is. I'm very much enjoying comics right now during this uh, this portion of the lockdown. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you got to keep yourself sane and, and find something that you enjoy and occupy your time. And it just, yep. that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? I'll, uh, I, 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 I need some superheroes right now in this era. And uh, Iron Man and Captain America and all these guys in Wolverine, they're really, they're, they're doing it for me. So, uh Oh, yeah, sure. yeah you know, I, know I grew up on the Marvel comics. I grew up on these characters, so it's a nice uh, nostalgia trip, too. So what is your take on Ryan Reynolds trying to get Hugh Jackman to come back as Wolverine and have uh, have them both on the same screen? I think, I, would I mean, that would be a it. riot. I would That'd be a riot. I don't know if, is it possible? I don't know, because didn't, didn't, uh, didn't Hugh Jackman say he was never going to do it again? I don't know. Yeah, but... When you got a, a savvy Canadian and, and Ryan Reynolds constantly on, I, he's going to break you. He'll break him. Ryan Reynolds <laughs> is a remarkable person when it comes to this. He cares deeply yes. about the characters. Oh, yeah. So oh, I, I would love to see it happen. But we don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Like We don't even know what Disney's going to do with these characters yet. We have no right. idea. It, it could be... Um, you know, I, I wonder if Deadpool will kind of exist in his own universe and never join the mainstream Marvel universe. I don't know. Hmm. That because be, he's yeah. different. How do you fit? How yeah. do you fit like Deadpool into the Avengers? I don't. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Be, be hilarious Canuck that might... Robert Daniels. Robert Daniels says <laughs> Captain Canuck. I would love to see Captain Canuck. Admiral Thrawn Captain in the. Canuck. Star Wars, yes. Admiral Thrawn is still canon in in, uh, in Star Wars because of uh, Star Wars Rebels. Yes, you are correct, Robert Daniels. Um, yeah, Admiral Thrawn from Star Wars Rebels. That debuted in Heir to the Empire, the, the, the trilogy that I was talking about. A lot of stuff debuted in that trilogy. Coruscant debuted in that trilogy. Um, huh. Coruscant came from uh, concept art. That was done around the turn of, time of Return of the Jedi when they were looking for a homeworld for the Emperor. And they kind of came up with this city planet. And okay. um, 
Heir to the Empire, the, the novel that came after Return of the Jedi, is the first uh, book to mention the name Coruscant. And George Lucas stuck with that name when he did uh, Phantom Menace. So um, that's oh. one of the very few things that Lucas didn't originate that he that he pulled into his movies. Because normally he wouldn't, you know, if something happens in a in a in a book, he normally would just say, "No, no, no, that didn't happen." <laughs> right. And and well, <laughs> why not? Right. Yeah, I mean, and then you got to you know people with their own take on it. I mean. I just, I you know, I'm still on the new, uh, the newer um, Star Wars, and just trying to take them all in. And uh, as far as um, you know, Rise of Skywalker and uh, the Last Jedi, I'm just trying to, you know, piece those together. What, uh, what two directors were, were going, and maybe what would happen if JJ were to have all three? Where was he really going with? Um, with Force Awakens, yeah. I think it's like where we. Yeah, think, I, I mean, I, this... I wonder. I wonder because because Ryan Johnson was given free reign to write his story, and he didn't have to do anything that JJ planned, you know. But right. I, I still like the sequel trilogy, and I think I think Rise of Skywalker tied everything together pretty nicely. Oh, for um, sure. I I truly believe that the that having Palpatine as the final bad guy was really the only way to go because right. the final trilogy has to be a sequel to the prequel and middle trilogy. It has to be a, it has to, it can't just be a, a, a sequel to the Han Luke and Leia era. It has to be a sequel to the whole thing. And, right. and, and to me, the one line of dialogue that nailed everything in that movie was, uh, the dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. unnatural. <laughs> that, to me, that one line of dialogue tied everything together. Everything. Yeah. The search for immortality was Palpatine's thing from the prequel trilogy. He achieved it in the sequel trilogy. And we don't really need to know how. Because the dark side is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Do we need to see right. Palpatine saying, okay, we need 16 goats to sacrifice, and then I will have the strength. And... No, we don't need that. We don't need to see how how it happened. Right. We just need to know that the dark side can do it. And we know that from Revenge of the Sith. That's right. So I'm very happy with the way Rise of Skywalker played out. It tied up the entire I thing. I, I enjoyed it. I watched it twice in theater, took my nephew um, and during Christmas time, and he was just like, just watching him. He, he didn't say a word, and he has autism, and usually he has a million questions. He just sat there and just at the screen, and it was just like, yeah. oh, that's, this is cool. I just I already watched it, so I kind of like looked over at him and was like, this is like watching a kid experience Star Wars is a next level kind of excitement now. Yeah. I envy that. I, yeah. <laughs> I saw it twice in the theater and already a number of times at home. Um, I don't know if you've watched all of the different uh, bonus features yet, but they're quite good. Um, the making of documentary is excellent. You get a little teary-eyed when they start talking about Carrie Fisher a little bit. Um, You're right. But, uh, you know, the only, I think the only really weakness to the rise of Skywalker, and it's just unfortunate because there was no way to round it, was that some of Carrie Fisher's dialogue is so general and so bland and vague that you just know they squeezed in as much as they could from anything they could and, and just made it fit. You know, very rarely in the movie does her dialogue really pertain to anything specific. And that's unfortunate. Right. You can sense, you can really sense that her scenes were edited together. And it's unfortunate because what else could you do? You can't recast Carrie Fisher. And you can't have Star no. Wars without Princess Leia at that point, you know? No. No, exactly. And uh, the fact that they brought back... Um... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Billy D. Williams? Um, there you go. I, think that, yeah. I mean, it brought a smile on my face, and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, you know, uh, it was kind of a nice, uh, another tie-up, kind of like bringing back those old characters, kind of reminisce and 
Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. The one that surprised me that I didn't see coming at all was Harrison Ford. Um, right. Rob Daniel, uh, I, I'm sorry to hear that, Rob, but uh, Rob, last Rise of Skywalker was the last movie he saw with his wife. But, um, you know, at least at least it was a good one, Rob. At least you saw a good movie and you didn't see, I don't know, um, Suicide Squad with her as the last movie. I'm sorry, I'm not a DC guy. <laughs> hi, hi <laughs> Aunt Barb, how are you? Um, hey, well, listen, Mike, thanks for chatting tonight. I just wanted to come on and do one more live stream before I, uh, before I called it a night. So thanks for some Star Wars chatting tonight. Right on. Hey, if you need a guess again, let me know. I'm if you're I'm around, pop I'll, on. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll... I will share my screen with you anytime. And maybe I'll grab a guitar next time. And... Yes, actually, that'd be awesome. Yeah, show us one of your guitars next time. Yes. I got, well, I got, uh. That. I got 10 now. I went. I actually found one on Kijiji uh, this week. A uh, guy was oh. selling a, um, I got a Les Paul Jr. It's an Epiphone, but uh, I found it for 150 bucks. I'm like, you know what? I'm taking it because you know what? It's a cool little guitar, kind of Green Day, Billy Joel, uh, kind of that single uh, pick up in the back and just grab it, plug it in and just rock out and have fun with it. So I was like, oh, yes. that's awesome. All right, well, well yeah. I, whatever guitar you decide to show off, I look forward to it. Oh, I got many, many I'll show off. So I'll do that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, you take care. Right, and, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to call it a night for the live streaming. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye, go. Bye-bye.